Israel did not exist. For years and years it did not exist. The That's peoples amazing. were dispersed all over the globe. 1,700 years. You know, a people without a land. And that's just completely unprecedented. Now, when you talk about people who were conquered by nation after nation, beginning with Babylon, and then coming under the rule of the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, and then the Romans by the time Jesus was on the earth, and then scattered right. throughout all different various nations throughout the world to then come back and possess their own land. And they haven't forgotten their religion, or, you know, many of their language. Or their national identity. That's right. That's incredible. That's never happened. It's miraculous. We've never seen such a thing. And it, frankly, is an evidence that God is doing that thing. Because we see in Revelation chapter 13 that the end time beast, which is a man, and also a nation or a kingdom, uh, that is a revival of the fourth kingdom, the Bible talks in Daniel chapter 7 and also in Daniel chapter 2 about man's world ruling kingdoms and that there would be four in number, right. beginning with Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon the Great and then the Med Medo-Persian Empire, right. Alexander the Great in Greece, right. and then the Roman Empire, which would be re re uh, revived through time and now exists again as the United States of Europe. Now that's remarkable in itself. Let's talk about that for just a moment. Well, the United States of Europe. Now you look back in recorded history and find out how long these various states have been at war with <laughs> one amazing. another. Just look at France and Spain and England and how they would vie in Italy for power in the world. Now they've been at war with each other for long thousands of years. And if someone had said before I witnessed these events unfolding that, no, they will all act as one, in one accord, with one national identity, I would have laughed you to scorn. Um, amen. I would not have believed that men would have the capacity. You know, it's hard to get ten people in a room to agree on what flavor ice cream is. That's about. right. So how do you figure you get these ten states there in Europe with all of that history, all of that national pride and self-interest, to all be on the same page. Now, I don't see that power within men to get that accomplished. It, it's a very clear indication that, and we talked about you know, Daniel chapter 2 that shows the image. Now, you're talking about two feet and ten toes. And I think if we look, we'll see. We've got two capitals. and that's that. Now, this, this is pretty unbelievable now because you're right. You know, because the fourth kingdom... Uh, beginning with the two legs of iron. Now that represents Rome. We know that. The Bible identifies that as Rome. And that it's iron and it's strong and it breaks the other nations to pieces. But the two legs represent two capitals. And of course the, the capital, the ancient capitals of, of, uh, of the Roman Empire was Rome in the west and Constantinople in the east, which is Istanbul, t Turkey today. And today the United States of Europe has, rem has some remarkable symbols associated with it that are apocalyptic in nature. I mean, they're straight out of the book of Revelation, really. For example, uh, they have a parliament building that cost eight to $12 billion that they built in Strasbourg, France. And it is a actual replica of the building of the Tower of Babel as as painted by the Dutch artist Peter Peter Bruegel, That's right. and uh, you know in his his painting, uh, it showed the building of the Tower of Babel, and it showed that it was partially built, part of it was unfinished, right. and so they use that as their blueprint basically, or as their right. image for what they right. wanted, you see, right. for their Parliament building, for the United States of Europe in Strasbourg, France. Now that is just unbelievable. And it is a, a tower. When you walk inside, it's a courtyard, and you look straight up and you see the sky. It's open. So, you know, the actual offices are cir circular and right. built uh, around it. But again, it's made to look like it's unfinished. And that's just unbelievable. 
What do you think about it? It's got God's fingerprints all over it. Amen. I mean, man cannot orchestrate a thing like this and no. without even recognizing it. I mean, they show, you know, the world was in a state of rebellion against God, united under Nimrod, shaking their fists at God. And now, man, it, the world is preparing for exactly that same kind of standoff, and they're even using that biblical imagery there. So what's the symbol that they have in the other? Well, capital? see, their, their other uh, capital is in, in Brussels, Belgium. Right. And outside uh, the parliament building, is a, a statue of a woman riding a bull or the woman riding the beast. Right. Now in this case it is a kind of a modern uh, rendering of Europa, right. the damsel that was, uh, uh, the mythology talks about, that was sleeping by, on the shore of the Great Sea, right. that's the Mediterranean Sea, and Zeus uh, looking down saw her and thought she was beautiful, so he turned himself into a, a bull, a white bull, and he laid down beside her. When she aw aw was awoke, she saw the bull and she got on his back. He then dove into the great sea, swam to the island of Crete, and there he raped Europa. So the very name of Europe is, 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 comes from the rape of Europa. And out of her came three half-man, have godlike or animal, but god sub god type right. creatures right. of mythology. Right. So you see the the symbols there. It's just pretty unbelievable. It's unmistakable. And you know, if you were to lay that out and say that was going to happen beforehand, no man does not have the ability to no do one, that. No one would believe that. It's an evidence that God is at work. And he declares the end from the beginning. And he said that's the way it was going to be. You know, in their, in their actual meetings there, they have proclaimed themselves a revival of the Roman Empire. That's right. And so that was going to have to be in the end time. We have to have the United States of Europe, and we see it fulfilled even down to the very imagery putting the stamp and seal God saying now listen you know, I told you this is what was going to be if you've got eyes to see and ears to hear it's unmistakable you know we know that Babylon the Babylonian system exists right. you know today because God in Revelation chapter uh, 18 calls on his people to come out of her he said right. come out of Babylon come That's out right. of her my people so that you will not be uh, you know, partakers of her plagues that are going to be, come upon her. Now, I think that's talking more than just about a system. I believe that's also talking about a, a city that will turn to wickedness. And I believe this is talking about Jerusalem. That may not be a very popular thing to say on this broadcast, but uh, that will be another program. But in the end time, the, the Antichrist the leader of the United States of Europe is going to take his seat in a rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. That's right. Matter of fact, we can read about that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24. When you see the abomination of desolation standing in the place it has no right to stand, That's right. let those who are in Judea flee to the hills. Well, so there there's coming a time when Christians are going to have to get out. Well, there are those that would say, now that was already fulfilled. Antiochus <clears throat> Epiphanes defiled the temple, and so, you know, that's already done. So how do we know that that hasn't already been done? <clears throat> because Jesus, uh, you know, he he's actually is about 200 years after that event that 